All right, welcome back to chapter six, part four. Uh, it's a big chapter, but it's an important one. So I'll, this chapter is about mutations and unfortunately things that we do to influence negative things from our environment, such as your diet and just food choices and just being knowledgeable is all I'm asking about what you put in your mouth. It, it is really, really important that uh, just because it's in a pretty package at a grocery store or something does not necessarily mean it's good for you or it's safe. Uh, it's just one of those things uh, that uh, is it's a point I, I really wanted to try to get across in this chapter, which is really important. Uh, just to for sake of review, uh, last time we talked about things in the environment that signal or influence expression of genes and a lot of these have have to do with binding of DNA that controls the RNA polymerase to make the transcript or things that affect the messenger RNA. Now we're going to talk about some of the things that affect uh, the infrastructure, in other words the genetic basis for uh, regular gene expression and it's not good when that changes. So what do I mean? So we're talking about mutation. Anything that alters the sequences of the genetic code, the, uh, the, the instructions to do something, if they get changed, then obviously it's going to have a variation from what was originally uh, intended and just, just can't be good. And so anyhow, it is, by the way, the force that drives evolution is mutation. So we do have in every generation of a family about three new mutations that occurs in our genome. A lot of them may be silent and never know about it, won't have any effect, but some can. And it could be a single point mutation, which there's diseases that we know of that are caused by a single point mutation. And these, of course, could be quite uh, devastating, just one. Uh, mutational change can change the shape of a protein at a key uh, folding or some aspect of it that would render that particular protein useless. Let's say it was an enzyme or something that enzyme no longer works. So that's the effects of uh, mutations and people that uh, take genetics they obviously use uh, because of the generation time you don't have to wait too long uh, fruit flies and you can see fruit flies I did when I was at NC State. We had uh, when I took a genetics course, we had to to grow our colonies of fruit flies and introduce mutations and cross them and all this stuff. And you can see the eye, which is this big red thing, and then these muted uh, other uh, uh, sizes uh, and alterations. You can see it was a mutation. And what you usually do is you do mutations and you try to map it where it occurred genetically. So um, anyhow, so sometimes uh, mutations occur that, uh, that affect the DNA in such a way that it changes the structure and function of a protein. This could be serious, even deadly. And for some, sometimes it could in a long uh uh, statistically, it could improve things. It's possible, but uh, most of the time, though, is a mutation draws it away from its perfection or its ability to do what it was intended to do, and it's usually a negative type thing. I'm going to talk about two genes, BRCA, BRCA1 and BRCA2, and these are, it's abbreviation for breast cancer gene, and if if these genes are intact and haven't been changed, it can actually help protect an individual, uh, a woman, from uh, obtaining a breast cancer, a form of breast cancer. But if these genes get mutated, uh, it can cause the lack of protection, I guess is the best way. They don't cause it, but they don't help stop or, or prevent uh, breast cancer from occurring. If you're interested in reading more about the BRCA genes, I have a link down here that uh, you can you can just copy it and uh, t 
uh, enter it. I used a bit.ly so you can make it really short so you can go. It's from the National Breast Cancer Foundation and they did an excellent job describing uh, these genes. And if you have that interest, uh, certainly by all means. So how mutations can affect is, is the BRCA1 and BRCA2 uh, are functioning properly. They reduce the breast cancer risk by helping repair DNA damage, which prevents accumulation of changes that lead to cancer. If the DNA sequences of either of these genes uh, is altered through mutation, then the gene's normal function is lost. The person carrying the gene has a significant increased risk of developing breast cancer. Now, the, the upside to that is at least we know what type of cancer. We could test, find out if you have these mutations, and then there are certain treatments because it's this type of cancer, we can deal with it a lot better. So uh, because of a variety of factors, including environmental variables, it's impossible to know if these uh, individuals will develop breast cancer. It's just, it, it comes down to statistics. So BRCA1 is located on chromosome 17, and BRCA2 location, which these are the, uh, the genes that uh, decrease the risk um, because they help prevent um, changes that lead to cancer on chromosome 13. So 17 and 13 have these locations, these loci. That's a locus, loci, there's two, it's plural. And so uh, they're just genes within the huge number of genetic sequences that are found on these chromosomes. So a DNA damage of some kind, we have wild type. Now, anytime you see wild type, that means it's most likely the normal type that you normally see out there. And so, uh, bibridine uh, uh, causes independent apoptosis, which uh, causes cell death, essentially. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to go through the de details. So just know that uh, at cell cycles, there's control points. Now, in the mutant, if it's a defect, then the check and balances uh, don't occur properly and you get genomic errors as a result of this and that some of those errors could lead to breast cancer and so just don't make more of it than it is it's kind of a, it's an overkill a slide I guess so there's about 200 different mutations in DNA sequences of these genes that have been detected each of which results in increased risk of developing breast cancer Given the havoc mutations cause, they can be surprising most mutations are neutral, having neither positive nor negative. Uh, this happens when a mutation occurs in a non-coding region of DNA, which DNA, so it, it, it's not going to affect anything of any significance or at all. We call that a silent mutation, and it doesn't affect any really function of the protein. The researchers estimate the rate of mutations in cells in reproduction is about 10 to the minus 8th per base pair per generation. Mutations, so that's about 2 or 3 uh, every generation. These mutations don't kill uh, or reduce its ability to reproduce or survive. Uh, most mutations you inherit from your parents will have no effect. And of course, you won't even know about it. So the types of mutations. Mutations in non-sex cells like lung cells, which are not passed on. But if you mutate, let's say, a sperm cell or an egg, uh, then these types can be passed on to offspring and won't have any real health effects individuals carrying them. But uh, it may have some other uh, characteristic that's passed on as a result. So uh, just because you have the genes isn't lethal. It just, it may, the expression of those genes may have some effect. I hope you followed me. Two major types of changes to DNA that may occur are point mutations and then chromosomal aberrations. Now, aberrations is a kind of a weird word. And I guess they were trying to find a word that kind of covers all the scenarios. Chromosomal rearrangements. Now, that doesn't cover all the weird things that can happen, but for the most part, that captures it. So chromosomal rearrangements, if you want to write that as, as uh, what that means. So mutation effects could be uh, in the non-sex cells such as lung cells, lung cancer, skin cancer, these signs. These aren't passed on. However, propensity for these types of cancers may be genetically passed, but it isn't as a result of you getting that cancer, is that 
you just uh, exposed a weakness in your cell line that uh, maybe uh, an offspring didn't uh, or wasn't exposed to a large amount of UV radiation from sunlight or something and, and caused uh, uh, these types of cancers. Mutations in sex cells or the gametes uh, the sperm or the egg conversely do not have any adverse health effects on those carrying them but these mutations can be passed on so of course um, and, and it could be drugs it could be cigarette smoking it could be various things that can cause damage to gametes we do know that certain cocaine and and cigarette smoking can cause mutations in sex cells we, we know that individuals inheriting mutations from parents can be at increased risk for diseases breast cancer, cardiovascular, other things, whatever the mutations cause. To change uh, to DNA cause, uh, the changes to DNA caused by mutations are generally of two types, point or chromosomal uh, aberrations, which we've already just talked about. Um, so uh, let's go through these a little bit. A point mutation is a single change or a nucleotide uh, change in a sequence that uh, if your messenger RNA is here and then each of the triplet codes encodes for methionine which is usually FMET the first one cysteine, serine, glycine, and arginine you can see now a mutation may especially if it's in the first part the last one if you mean if you remember wobbles and if you have a change there it may or may not change the amino acid but if it's in the first two positions of that triple code uh, it will and so we go from a cysteine to a serine in a point mutation uh, it's going to be a mutated protein. Now the effects of that on the protein uh, will have to play out. We won't know. If you insert a uh, sequence, you know, you have a, a insertion. So we have methionine and cysteine and all of a sudden we change and we add a, 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 a cytosine. And that changes now all the way down the road. And this type of uh, mutation is called a frame shift. If you see that it added the triplet code, it now offset all the triplet codes affecting downstream from that mutation. Uh, everything is different and usually these are lethal. And the same thing can happen. You can add one or delete one uh, or two um, bases and you're going to get a frame shift. As a result you get garbage essentially. It reads in a frame that wasn't intended and uh, it's very serious. So point mutations are in which one nucleotide base pair in the DNA is replaced with another or in which a base pair is inserted or deleted can be uh, which those types the insertions or deletions are much more harmful because of that frame shift. Um, the amino acid sequence of a protein is determined by that reading frame. If you throw that off you're going to get gibberish. And so point mutations, a rib, you know, here's the original, just to kind of say it again, corresponds to the amino acid. So a silent mutation, if the original sequence is here, UUA corresponds to leucine, and you have a mutation, and it still produces leucine, it's, it's a silent mutation. Missense mutation is where it substitutes in another amino acid. That's a missense. And then a nonsense mutation is it puts in the punctuation, either start or stop, but it's usually stop. And that's really, really bad. And uh, so uh, this, is the, this is an important slide from the standpoint of understanding the silent missense and nonsense type of mutations. And again, silent is it doesn't change it. Missense means that it changed it to a different amino acid. The implications of which, well, it depends. You have to see what happens. And then the stop code on it just stops and it no longer makes the normal message. So, again, I'll just try to say it. We have um, chromosomal aberrations, which are really a much larger scale here. So, gene 1, gene 2, gene 3. Gene 2 is deleted. Well, if it's deleted, then that is pretty bad because now you don't get the benefit. Gene relocation, in other words, the genes moved around and uh, 
Chrome, uh, these are all aberrations. So the, the moving at location, if it's in an operon, could be devastating. Or you get genes duplicated, and it may or may not have an implication. But we, we know all of these uh, have occurred. And this is what they refer to as chromosomal uh, aberrations that I mentioned before. So these aberrations are changes to the overall organization of the genes, which is important. And they uh, really, they change chunks of DNA. And they can involve complex deletion to an entire section, like I've mentioned, uh, or moving them from different parts around. And they can have all sorts of um, changes. And we know these things can happen also at the chromosomal level where we get translocations of parts of chromosomes, inversions of parts of chromosomes, and all those sorts of things. So just to review, original sequence, we get a point mutation. And so there's, uh, it changes that particular uh, position. It may mean a difference in uh, amino acid. Or we get original sequence and we get a substitution of a, a particular reading frame uh, without a reading frame change. We just have uh, GAT instead of TGC and it's a substitution. Uh, an inversion where the uh, sequences are flipped uh, or an insertion and that causes if it's a single base a frame shift mutation so everything made after that point is going to be gibberish or a deletion same thing is you get a frame shift and everything um, from downstream to that is going to be gibberish so we've talked about really the important types of mutations and the implications to the reading frame uh, things that change that reading frame are devastating terrible bad 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 a point mutation where you have just a, a base change it may not it could be silent or it could have an effect uh, so it's just to keep uh, that in mind. So spontaneous mutation arrives by accident during DNA replication. So there's an inherent error rate. It's like 10 to the minus 23rd or something like that. For every basis, uh, 10 to the 23rd of those bases, you'll get a mutation as a result because the machinery replicating the, the genetics uh, introduces it. And that, in fact, is what drives uh, evolution. But we'll come back to that later. En environmental factors can cause mutation, radiation-induced or chemical-induced. Now, anyone that's gotten a sunburn, you've really zapped your uh, skin with a DN uh, your DNA in your skin, in your cells, with UV. And that causes what they refer to as thymine dimers. So everywhere there's a thymine, instead of binding to its complement, it binds to the thymine right next to it, if there is one, and that's called a thymine dimer. And then your machinery excises these two bases out of your DNA, it's trying to repair it. Well, as you know, we just talked about that, if you delete those, it'll change the reading frame. Uh, you can get some really nasty skin cancers and things from that. Or the equipment that uh, you get excessive numbers of uh, x-rays for whatever reasons or tanning beds or smoking um, no you're running a risk so it causes of these mutations it really we need to think about it. spontaneous ones you can't really do a whole lot about but radiation induced is limiting your exposure to UV from the sunlight which uh, they say is increasing the incident rate of skin cancer in women has is greatly increased uh, over the last 10 years. Uh, it, it, they don't really know why, but uh, it's, it's, it's something about UV, perhaps. We don't really know. Another source of dangerous ionizing radiation is, of course, nuclear power plants. Those folks that live near Fukushima or the, in Japan where they had that terrible tsunami that caused the reactor to uh, to go critical. Uh, but these are bad things that happen and we, we don't have much control over those uh, once they get going. And But uh, you want to limit your exposure to those by moving or getting away from the source but so many died from this and then there's lingering thyroid cancers and all that. Then chemically induced mutations found things like cigarette smoke, engine exhaust, 
um, used engine oil. Um, these things can affect DNA because they're chemicals that damage DNA and these cause profound health problems. So UV radiation, x-rays, cigarette smoke, nitrate, nitrite preservatives, barbecuing, uh, anytime you burn something it leaves residues and they could be toxic materials. Benzoate peroxide uh, associated can damage DNA. Uh, uh, papillomavirus, oh, it's a sexually transmitted disease, can alter DNA sequences and hence cause cancer. Helobacter pylori, uh, one that causes uh, ulcers and the like, has been known uh, to cause cancers. So, the top 12 toxins of personal care BHA, BHT, car tar, uh, coal, coal tar dyes, uh, DEA related, we're going to talk about bifutal uh, phthalates. Every time you get a receipt uh, or uh, uh, swimming pools sometimes have phthalates in them, uh, clothes, carpets are sprayed with them, and uh, formaldehyde, same sort of thing, uh, preservative of some kind, parabens, trilosin, the hand wash uh, because of Mercid not Mercid, uh, because of the COVID, uh, trilosin is around, but it's a cancer-causing agent, just good old soap and water or one that doesn't contain that. Silooxanes, sodium lauryl sulfates, petroleum, PEG compounds, we'll talk about, uh, parfum, we'll, we'll talk about various ones of these. So let's talk about some of the common ones. FDA tests show that three most widely used dyes, red dye number 40, yellow 5, yellow 6, are tainted with low levels of cancer-causing compounds, including benzidine and 4-amino biphenyl, which is in yellow 7. And, you know, they uh, red is, in most other countries, they use a, a beetle that's red they grind it up and gives you that reddish color no we still use colors generated by chemicals here uh, fdc blue and fdc uh, red number 40 and these sorts of things uh, these are vitamins flintstones vitamins and my god look at all these things in there that uh, are not good for you they're just not and they're in here but anyhow I'd rather not have color. <laughs> if you just made the Flintstone vitamins without the color, I think it'd be a lot healthier for you. But anyhow, reading the contain uh, the, uh, the contents is really uh, important. Here's a mile of vitamins. I don't know how many you use those, but the ingredients and natural flavor contains less than 2% of stevia leaf extract, which gives us that sweetness. And if you notice, if you had that, you taste it, and then it's bitter a little bit afterwards. Um, some people are allergic to stevia. Sodium citrate, but red number 40, yellow number 5, number 6, and potassium sorbate. These are not good. These things can cause problems later, and or maybe not later. It depends on how long you've been exposed to this. Maybe once or twice every now and then is fine, but not on a regular basis. The food dyes to avoid, blue 1, blue 2, green 3, red 3, red 40, that's a biggie, yellow 5 and 6. Uh, FDC lakes may contain multiple combinations of colors. Citrus red 2 used in oranges, frankfurters, so those little red hot dogs, no, 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 don't, 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 mm -mm. I know, I, I get the complaint, you're going to find out that yes, only things you can eat are rocks and sticks but for right now let me go through dyes are also sometimes referred to as artificial colors unfortunately they don't really add it's it's all about colors just bringing um, marketing into your foods and things and frankly you can do away with the color i don't need it and uh, it just makes food less toxic oh my gosh fruit loops cocoa puffs are you cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Well, if you eat those things, it's probably better just to eat the box. Okay, you'll probably get more health from that. You don't quote me on that, but uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Live long cinnamon flavors. But look at the colors and things that they add to these. And uh, these, again, uh, it would be actually healthier to eat the box. Well, I can't say that because they even painted the boxes. So uh, just avoid these sorts of things. Glycophate, this is the new one now. Uh, people spraying Roundup 
and of course they use it commercially all the time because the bugs and things that are nasty you got to get rid of them it affects the uh, yields and things of food well it's making it uh, the glycophate that's in uh, Roundup is actually getting into the food service now so so what's the healthy layer level of having uh, glycophate in your food well in my book is zero it's a chemical that shouldn't be there it's there because we use it for various things it's a commercial concern by Monsanto and all those things um, Quaker oatmeal squares breakfast cereal contain levels of glycophate 18 times higher than the benchmark that we typically see. PPB is parts per billion. Um, so that's, uh, you would think that's a lot, but look at the numbers, 2,837 parts per billion. Um, I would say zero parts per billion is uh, safe. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that there's um, safety levels been established as 160 parts per billion. Uh, look at these uh, way way over that and uh, boy it's just scary to see that uh, glycophate uh, showing up in these wheats and various things that were harvested but still contain uh, the uh, roundup that was sprayed so uh, Cheerios Lucky Charms yeah in addition to all those other things that we talked about with the food coloring now we add the glycophate on top of that so uh, yummy yummy breakfast uh, it, again uh, I would uh, make some better choices if I uh, you're young you may not see it right away but if it just keeps building up and um, of course EPA Environmental Protection Agency there's no health risk from trace amounts of herbicide in breakfast cereals well if you take into the consideration you eat it one time hmm okay but if you eat it every day and you force your little child to eat it you know you just put them in a little baby uh, uh, high chair and you strap them in and you take a spoon and you force it into their mouth no I'm just joking but um, these children will eat this uh, what you're essentially eating is part of the roundup now you can play the video uh, you can click on that video we'll play for you um, I'm not going to take the time now to do that but uh, if you're interested in that um, I'm not making this stuff up chemical compounds in cigarette smoke nicotine acetaldehyde 1,3-butadiene uh, nitrosamines benzene acrolein acrolein is the number two most toxic substance known uh, it is nasty very known it's known as a DNA mutagen this is cigarettes um, now I didn't want to make my students mad if I showed the the component uh, components in marijuana but I won't go there uh, aromatic uh, amines and polyaromatics and all of these known DNA mutagens known human carcinogens and you got it very conveniently packaged in one little small cigarette isn't that just wonderful no so I see people smoking and see uh, my mom uh, she had COPD chronic obstructive pulmonary disease you don't want it uh, I wouldn't even want that on my worst enemy it is an awful awful disease from cigarette smoking and uh, I just can't imagine anyone that would want to cigarette smoke at this point in time there's so much known about it uh, tap water another thing uh, I have a Berkey water purifier at my house uh, and that gets rid of uh, 0.99999 percent it's way down there and it screen it gets rid of a lot of these yeah I spent a little bit of extra money but can you imagine how much money you're going to spend on health care because uh, you're being exposed to some chemical uh, the Berkey's all of a sudden take on a new uh, uh, premise in my house because well it's it's preventive maintenance uh, so they got a test and the Gen X contamination. You can do a search in Google to find out more about that. But it's a fluorochemical tied to uh, uh, certain types of processing um, uh, uh, by um, uh, corporations uh, that make certain things. And uh, Cape Fear Public Utility Authority uh, Sweeney Water Treatment Plant showed levels of Gen X. None of them were above the health services goal of 140 parts per trillion. 
no, that, that's not parts per billion. That's 140 parts per trillion. So that's a pretty low amount. Tests show that almost 200 homes showed other fluorocarbons, including uh, nifon, uh, byproduct two in homes, and other chemicals. A lot of these water testings that we have for public water don't even test for a lot of these things. And uh, in New York, there was a big thing about all of a sudden couples wanting to have children couldn't have them. And it turns out that part of the issue is that birth control, of course, you know, when uh, someone takes it, they urinate, goes into the sewer system. They don't do anything to clean it out of there. And so there's in high concentrated city areas, you get large uh, amounts of this birth control and it has its effects. It's still active to some degree. So you drink your water and all of a sudden you're getting birth control. Uh, no, it's not good. Detergents insecticides, herbicides, fertilizers, petroleum hydrocarbons and distillates and gasoline, diesel fuel, things like that, and motor oils, volatile organic compounds. You know, a lot of the cleaning materials you have in your home are toxic. You need to be careful. Try to get those that are natural and um, you don't breathe these things in. Um, trichloroethylene, um, perchlorate, uh, inorganic water pollutants include, of course, acidity, from industrial discharge, ammonia from food processing waste, heavy metals from motor vehicles and re recycled computers, and uh, wow, it's just all these things are in our environment. I just want you to be aware. Um, knowledge is power, and you need to think about these things and try to make sure that you stay away from them. Um, Pharmaceutical drugs and their metabolites include antidepressants, hormonal medicines such as contraceptive pills. These molecules can be small and almost impossible for treatment plants to remove. Um, drug pollution and pharmaceutical pollution is the new thing. It, it's, it's polluting our environment and our water sources and we're seeing this. Uh, it is now detected in water throughout the world and so everyone is having the effects of these sorts of things and uh, what they are well, I guess we'll find out uh, the Flint um, water uh, Gen X issue I've already kind of talked about but having exposures uh, to dust and plastic you know they are little parts of plastics and things uh, in our air sources of phthalates of course plastic are those you inhale it ingest it get it through your skin and then they can test and shows up as a metabolite in your urine so we we know that uh, exposures are there um, endocrine disruptors now this is a story I tell you what endocrine disruptors a lot of these chemicals and we've already talked about them as, as far as early on when we we're talking about chemistry there are things that mimic uh, certain hormones or some active like uh, uh, getting um, morphine it, it, it mimics the endorphin like structure and it has an effect so it binds to the receptor and so morphine gives you that pain killing effect well mimic or partially mimic naturally occurring hormones in the body like this female sex hormone or androgens the male sex hormone uh, can bind a receptor cause exogenous hormone um, stimulation uh, these chemicals can block or antagonize hormones and the bottom line is uh, these things can cause alterations of the way we normally uh, our bodies try to keep a, a normal balance level and uh, unfortunately uh, a lot of these endocrine disruptors can affect the increase in men female hormones and that would take away your manliness if you know what I mean it just uh, uh, I'll leave it there you can kind of look it up yourself chemicals known to be endocrine disruptors include diethyl sorbistrol or DES um, a dioxin, dioxin-like compounds, poor, uh, polychlorinated biphenyls, and DT, DDT, and some other pesticides. Now, there's BE. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. So, um, when absorbed through the body, the endocrine disruptor can decrease or increase normal hormone levels. And every time uh, you take a receipt 
that's been printed with those thermal printers, you're getting a little bit of BPA through your fingers. That can cause a endocrine disruption. And as the problem is, it's like getting a, a, a small dose of female hormone. Uh, for women, that's not good. And for men, it's not good. And so it's a lose-lose type of scenario. But yet yeah, we do it. Uh, growth hormones, they've been banned for the most part, but I remember uh, certain gro growth hormones, be the uh, growth hormones um, for bovine growth hormones and uh, BSTs and various things. Um, BPAs, really big thermal uh, receipt papers I already mentioned. Plastics in your bottles. Look at the bottoms. Find out what type of plastic they, they are. If they're odd numbered, they're probably not good for you. Even number ones, well, maybe a little bit safer. Children's toys, canned foods, uh, because inside the metal, uh, around the metal, they, they coat it with a plastic so that it doesn't alter the flavor of the food. And that plastic out or leaches BPA or BPS and causes hormone disruption. So leaving uh, water bottles that you buy at the store, you know, the, 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 the little water things, and you leave it in your car and it gets exposed to the heat, well, you're accelerating the outgassing of the terrible things in the plastics, and like BPA and the like gets in the water, you drink it, and boy, you're getting a direct dose of hormone disruption. So BPA causes harm to the brain, behavior, and prostate in young children may have other effects because of the hormone disruption. In other words, what's going to happen when you start increasing uh, female hormones? And uh, this could mean uh, men having certain characteristics of women, um, or women having certain characteristics of men, uh, the mustaches and the like. Uh, it's all hor hormonal disruption, so I wanted to, to bring that up. So here's uh, ones that uh, PET, soft drink bottles, mineral water, uh, HDPE, highly dense uh, polypropylene milk drugs. These tend not to be as bad as uh, uh, the PVC, PP, or the polypropylene, polystyrene or styrene and then other types of plastics and the, the thing is you're not aware that a lot of these plastics uh, uh, will leach or they'll, they'll move into your chemicals or the chemicals and it's not just one type of plastic either a lot of these fancy bottles have characteristics with layered different types of plastics so it's UV uh, um, protection and it's oh, this and this and that, these and those. So um, here's the you know you'll see this little symbol printed on the bottom of the bottles uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you can see any plastic des designated number seven is likely to leach BPA or BPS. So number seven, um, it's, it's in that mix, are bad. Uh, DEHP has been replaced with another chemical called dinitrophthalate, uh, which has a similar shown to cause disrupted um, types of uh, uh, issues. And so it's uh, um, all of these uh, things. Polystyrenes can be uh, can leach. Styrene is suspected as a, uh, a carcinogen. So there's six, five, four. Uh, you got to be careful uh, of the types. Never heat or microwave or food in plastic increases the amount of leaching. Contact by BPA, avoiding plastic wrap, aluminum foil, wax parchment, plastic food containers, disposable water bottles. Uh, look for BPA free on the labels of products. Yeah, it's just a little extra effort. Avoid phthalates uh, by avoiding PVC products. Label is number three. Look for phthalate free labels. Whenever possible, uh, air new plastic bottles like blow up mattresses, synthetic uh, fiber rugs, tablecloths, toys. Um, leave them outside for a few hours to get those uh, types of uh, products to outgas some of those nasty things. Avoid plastics number six and number seven. And I used to say, well, you're pretty much off if you're better off if you use deposit or the even numbers. Really, they all have certain characteristics uh, that may be bad for you. But um, 
at least the ones that we know of, uh, it's best uh, to be uh, aware. Vinyl flooring, backpacks, building materials, lunch boxes, all of these things are toxic in our environment and phthalates can cause birth defects and other various things. It can uh, change puberty. If you've wondered why children seem to be uh, going through puberty earlier and earlier, uh, at age 10, age 9, I remember growing up, and it was 13, 14 that these things happen. And it's part of the uh, uh, our environment, having these things in our environment. And you can go and look up this paper. There's new ones now. Uh, this is from 2014. They got lots of papers. Banned in Europe. Brominated vegetable oil, BVO, uh, and it's listed right on, it's banned in Europe and Japan. I, I, I used to frequently travel to Japan. You didn't see Mountain Dew over there. Um, it seems like we're the only ones going around drinking brominated vegetable oil, um, and it's, it's, it's known to be bad. Hydrogenated oils, french fries. I know, don't start crying yet. Microwave popcorn, that's a bad, bad. Do not microwave popcorn, especially with butter on it. Processed meats, red meats, farm salmon, refined sugar, soda, diet foods, refined white flour, GMOs, glycophate, and many more. And rocks and sticks are okay. I just thought I'd let you know. Bacon, lunch meat, hot dogs, sausages, any processed meats uh, shown to be cancer-causing foods. Risk of pancreatic cancer. Steve Jobs died from pancreatic cancer. 67% increased risk eating this stuff. Leukemia risk soar is staggering 700% with hot dog consumption. Meats free of nitrates. These things damage DNA. I know. They're packaged. They're wrapped. Oh my gosh, Dr. V. Uh, they should be okay for you. Well, you know, it's all about making money and packaging. You know, those are important. ADA is banned in Europe, but it's found in 500 common American grocery stores and chain restaurant foods. Uh, carbonide, uh, ADA, cereals and bread. You know, I saw that uh, this gentleman found a hamburger from Hardee's and been in the pocket of a coat he hadn't used or worn in 15 years. Guess what he found? The bread was almost intact. It was there. The only thing it didn't survive was the pickle. The meat hamburger part was still there, and the wrapper was still there. Uh, think about that. Uh, that's not natural. And having a hamburger like that survive in a coat of a pocket for all those years, you're eating plastic. That's essentially what this is. It's a, it's a, it's a plastic. You might be eating the dashboard off your car. It'd be probably even taste better. Chemical induced mutations, chemicals such as those found in cigarette smoke, engine exhaust can react with atoms and DNA molecules and induce mutations. We need to uh, uh, try to um, move away from exposure best we can. All these breads that have that plastic uh, uh, material, the uh, azocarbamide azocarbam uh, or ADA, um, it's, it's, it's like eating the exercise mat. Um, dual uses of this azeta car carbamide, a sandwich franchise, Subway, a hamburger. Boy, they caught, because it, it, they just stayed fresh for a long time. And you could see it. Oh, they could leave it for weeks and it still looked okay. Um, they no longer use uh, putting plastic in your dough in the uh, con as a conditioner. Well, that's nice of them. That's, that's good. Um, so any substance high concern is a, sub, a chemical substance or a part of a chemical for which has been proposed to use within the European Union to be subject to authorization under the REACH regulation. So if you have any question about the safety of certain food, use the European Union um, uh, REACH regulations and see if it's included in theirs. So azetocarbamide, hydro, hydros, carbamide, uh, ultrazole, Nitrofurazole, semi-carbazine, or carbonide, uh, carbazide, excuse me, SEM. All of these things are plasticizers that are added. Stay away from these things. Read the labels. I mean, if it's got um, uh, thickeners, are really bad for that. Gluten is another one. Don't get me started on gluten. Gluten has been changed. It isn't the same gluten when I was a kid. 
gluten's been modified chemically and it's much more antigenic and it has effects. One of those is inflammation. Guys, inflammation equals bad. We don't want inflammation. Ladies, we don't, you don't want it either, but men are even more affected by it. So you want to be careful. So looking at uh, potential hazardous food consequences of mutations, minimize their occurrence in your diet because we know it's going to uh, cause spontaneous mutations of various types. UV and radiation ones that we can deal with a little bit better uh, because we can choose not to be in the sun or uh, exposed to radiation uh, best we can. So um, mutations are alterations in a single base pair or changes in large segments of DNA. Mutations are rare but may disrupt normal functioning. Extremely rare mutations may have a benefit, a beneficial effect, and we see this for ev evolution. Um, so, well, we made it. We got through all these things. We're going to stop here. Uh, reflect on these things that I tell you. I don't mean it to, to try to scare you. I want you to uh, look at the contents of things and make decisions. The best way to deal with it is you vote with your feet. If it contains something that you don't like, uh, just put it back and just walk away. And then the, the manufacturer will think twice about putting that in their product uh, because they want to sell their products. And uh, uh, so uh, carrageenan is another, it's a food thickener. They have carrageenan, it's a extract from seaweed. Uh, unfortunately, it has the same sort of thing. It has it's in itself is not bad but when it's broken down into other chemicals uh, like the artificial sweeteners and all those uh, it can cause liver damage and these things you see it in ice cream and you see it in all sorts of things why is it there well economically it's cheaper to put these types of products in foods to make them thicker and taste better you know from your tongue point of view and so they use them but there are other products but it costs more so Anyhow, uh, we talked about it, so there you go. So that's uh, what we're going to cover, and uh, we have questions. If you uh, want to have discussions about this, send me an email, and I can open up a, um, a chat area on Blackboard, and uh, we can talk about these sorts of things if you have something you want to share with others or something. But again, not everyone's into uh, doing those types of things, but if you'd like to, to uh, have that shared up I'd be glad to set that up for you just send me an email or I may just ask it in the next roll poll um, if you want to discuss some of the uh, implications to food safety thank you very much uh, be safe and I'll see you next time